So the topic of today's video is finite state machines. And a state machine is simply something that has different states, has a means of changing from state to state, and has some rules for how it changes from state to state. And we see a, a not a super complicated example here, but a reasonably complex one. We've got, we're looking for the word nice. And you can see that there's different states for, we, we have a start state, and if the N is found, if, we, if there's an N is the first letter, then we go into the N found state. If an I is the next letter, we go with the I found state. But if a C is not the next letter, then we go to this error state. We didn't find the word nice. And you see all the blue circles and the red circles and the green circles. These are all the different states. And we've got these different rules for changing from state to state. Now this is a little bit more complicated than the type of state machine we're going to start with, although it isn't really all that complicated. What we're going to look at is, is probably one of the, the simplest types of, of state machine, and that's a counter. Now a counter, as you know, is just a... Uh, well, it's a state machine, and the different states are represented by the different numbers. And the rules for changing from state to state is it's always going to increment by 1. So what we have here are all of the 16 states for a 4-bit counter. We haven't sh I haven't shown the state transitions or the rules for changing from state to state, but they're very simple for a counter. If you're in state 0000, zero, zero, zero on the signal to change states, you move to 0, 0, 0, 0001, and then the, and the next signal change states, you change to 0, 0, 0010, 0, and then 0, 0, 0011, 1, and then 0, 0100, 0, 0, which is 4, and then 5, and then 6, and then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then back to zero. And the signal to change states for a digital circuit is going to be a clock pulse, a rising edge of the clock pulse, or falling edge of the clock pulse, usually. And, and maybe associated with some other logic, but for, the, for a simple counter that's just the, right, the clock pulse. The clock pulse comes to say change states, or other, in other words, increment the counter. 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 16, uh, all the way up to 15, once you get 15, cycle back down, back to zero. So this is a state machine diagram, and this is one way to represent how the state machine works. Another way is with a state transition table, and that's what I'm showing right here. And the state transitions table is just showing that showing the current state. So if you're in if you're in the state shown in this particular column, then the state that you go to next is is the state that's in the next state column. So if you're in, if you're in state 0000, zero, zero, zero the next state is 0001. Zero, zero, and th because the rules for changing are so simple, we don't even we don't even introduce the rules in this particular table. You may have the rules in the ta in a table, but in this table for the simple uh, four bit counter, we're not going to have any rules. And and what it, since we don't have any rules, the the only rule is that on the tick of a clock we're going to go from the current state to the next state. Now what if we were to make an up-down counter and we wanted to represent this that with this state transition table? Well, oh, I don't want to use black. I've got black already. I want to use blue. So a down counter, the down part of the counter is going to be going in this direction, of course. So we're at 13 to 12 to 11 to 10 to 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then back up to 15 again. And we're going to need a control signal to say whether we want to count up or down. So I can say uh, we've got this signal called the up-down signal, and we're going to count down if it's equal to zero. And on the outside loop for all of the red transitions, that's going to to occur if up down is equal to one. So we've got a new transition state table uh, diagram. We're also going to need a new transition state table, a new state table. And our new state table shows a little bit more information. We've got the column for the current state, which is showing you know what state are you currently in, and then on the rising edge of the clock. If the up-down signal is equal to 1, 
we're going to count upwards. So for his current state is 0, 0, 0, 0, our next state will be 0, 0, 0, 1. However, if on the, on the clock edge, say rising edge of the clock, if the up-down is equal to 0, and our current state is 0, 0, 0, 0, our next state will be 1, 1, 1, 1. Now here's a 2-bit counter, so seemingly very simple, only four different states if you've got a 2-bit counter. And our four different states are going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And if, we've, if we're, um, let's see, counting upwards, we're going to have transitions like this, 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 back to 0. And if we're counting down, we're going from 3 to 2, 2 to 1, and 1 down to 0. I'm just going to draw some bubbles around my states here. Hopefully make it less confusing, but maybe not. And this, this, so this would be a simple up-down counter with two bits, but of course we could have a lot more control signals in here. What if we have a set signal? So that's this uh, set signal is going to set all the bits to, the, to, to one. So if we've got a set signal, we're going to do something like this. If we're in the state zero, 0, and we get this set signal, we're going to go to 1, 1. If we're in 1, 1, we get the set signal. Or if we're at 1, 0, we get the set signal, we'll go to 1, 1. And if we're at 1, 0, or 0, 1, and we get the set signal, we're also going to go to 1, 1. Also, we could have a reset signal. So the reset is going to take us to 0, 0, no matter what. So my pink is my reset signal. If I'm in state 1, 0, and I get the reset, I'm going to go to 0, 0. If I'm in state 1, 1, and I get a reset, I'm going to go to 0, 0. And if I'm in the state 0, 1, and I get a reset, I'm going to go to 0, 0. The other thing that's that's uh, I guess I could put here, if I'm in 0, 0, and I get a reset, then I'm going to go to 0, 0. And similarly, if I'm in the 1, 1 state, and I get a set, then I'm going to go to, I'm going to stay in the 1, 1 state. So yeah, even a simple 2-bit counter, if there's a few more control signals, we start drawing out the state diagram, and it can get quite complicated. And so if it's, so if it's this complicated, and this many different state transitions for a 2-bit counter with set and reset signals, you can imagine that something like a computer, which is essentially just a state machine, it's got lots of different states and different ways of transitioning from state to state, if you were to try to draw a state diagram for a computer, it would be pretty much impossible. And and really, if you're going to do design a computer, you're going to break it up into pieces and do the state machines for each one of those individual pieces. Now, th th these were regular, just normal pattern counting. What if we wanted to create some arbitrary sequence? And there may be a reason for creating that arbitrary sequence, but... Just just imagine that we have this reason for generating an arbitrary sequence, and we want to create a sequence, a counting sequence of this. And what this is, is a three-bit three bit counting, a three-bit counter, but we're only counting the odd numbers. So we go one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. So this is our state transition. State transitions occur like this. And so since I'm doing the odd numbers from, from 1 to 7, I'm going to need 3 bits to represent all those odd numbers, all, all those odd numbers. And each one of those bits is going to be uh, represented or in, in, in the physical actual physical design by a flip-flop. So I'm going to need 3 flip-flops. And I'm also going to have, because with 3 bits I'm going to have 8 different possible combinations of bits, I've got 4 combinations of bits that don't fit into the state into the, the state transitions that I want to define. So what happened? What would happen if, for some reason, my system started up with the values of zero, zero, zero for my for my three bits? Well, my rules here for my state diagram do not handle that case. So usually, you're going to have to hand if you're if you're coming up with a state machine, and there are certain cases that aren't covered in your state machine, you're going to have to cover them somehow. And usually they'll be covered by 
by just defining them to somehow enter into into the the loop of the state machine here. So I've got the it's the even numbers that I don't have in the state machine. You know, zero, two, four, six. So I can define the rules something like this. So zero will transition to zero, zero, one. Zero, one, zero will transition to one. 4 will transition to 1, and 6 will also transition to 1. So now I've been able to, I'm handling all of the possible states when I've got 3 bits, 3 flip-flops. Or as another example, if we needed to, to create a state machine for a system that repeatedly divides the current state by 2 until we get down to the, the final state, and, and divides by 2 and discards the remainder. So I have... Um, one 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 zero so seven six four and five they both transition to the state I guess seven and six both divide seven by two and divide six by two and they both give you three with so with either with some amount of remainder either zero or one and then three you divide three by two and that's going to give you 1 with remainder of, of 1, but we discard the remainder. And you divide 1 by 2, and it gives you 0 with a remainder of 1, but we discard the remainder. And you're at 0, you divide 0 by 2. And there we're going to stay in the 0 state. 0 divided by 2 is always going to be 0, so we're going to just stay in that state. Uh, if you divide 4 by 2, that's going to give you 2 with a remainder of 0. Divide 5 by 2, that's going to give you 2. We discard the remainder. 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. And then we already defined what happens for, the, for this uh, when we're in the state of 1. Now, if you're going to go in and design the circuit for any of these particular counters or state machines, so if it's this counter with some arbitrary sequence, if it's this repeated divide by 2 state machine, or any state machine, you wanted to... What you, you wanted to uh, design the circuit just at the at the gate level and the, at the flip flop level. It's a it's a fairly detailed procedure and it's fairly involved. And the first step would be to create your present state next state transition table like we did like I showed you for the four bit counter. And then the next to look at the individual bits. So with a four bit counter, you've got four bits, and so. Uh, for each one of the bits, how how does that bit behave in each one of those transitions, and then come up with a with another table for that, and then come up with a logic expression for each one of those bits, and that logic expression is what's going to feed into the flip flop. It can be a long process, and it's not really necessary unless you want to get a really good understanding of of the way flip flops are working, and the way that your system's built to, at the at the flip flop and and gate level. Usually what's done instead is that a hardware description language is used to, to create your finite state machine. So instead of, instead of having to, if, you, if you're familiar with Cordis or some other kind of design tool, instead of using the block diagram file to, to create these blocks of flip-flops that you connect with wires, you actually use a, a hardware description language, something, uh, some examples include Verilog and VHDL, that's sort of sort of like a programming language, but it's not a sequential programming language. It's more a description of how the hardware works. And because we're using words, we're, we can really just take this, the uh, state machine diagrams that we've got here and convert it into, into code. And something like, a, something like this repeated divide by two circuit right here, we can implement in a hardware description language that might look something like this. Now this is not an official hardware description language, but you can sort of get the idea of how a description, a hardware description language would work. It describes what's going to happen also on the, on the rising edge of the clock. We're going to check what state we're in. And depending on which state we're in, we're going to set the state to the next state. So if we're in 7, we're going to set the state to 3. If we're at 6, we're going to set the state to 3. If our state is 5, we're going to set the state to 2. If we're at 4, we're going to set the next state to 2, etc. And then we've got all of the different states defined here, and then all the state transitions defined here. 
and you can take a compiler for the hardware description language and it's going to take care of creating all of the logic and all the flip-flops necessary so all you really have to do is think about how to create the state machine instead of having to think about how the flip-flops are going to actually be organized with logic gates feeding into them and stuff like that now creating the state machine is not necessarily a trivial thing to do but it definitely if you're just focusing on the state machine it, it uh, gives you a level of abstraction that makes the design a little bit easier well, I hope you've got a little bit better understanding of, of what finite state machines are. And I'll see you in the next video where I'll go through several more examples of finite state machines and look at the state machine diagrams as well as some pseudocode that can help you implement the state machines on actual hardware.